What's going on, hockey fans, Dan K Show fans, players, everybody? It's a huge week for the Dan K Show. It's Commissioner Week, baby. We're talking with Commissioner Bob Turo, and we're also talking about all the teams that proved us wrong post power rankings, all that and more on this week's Dan K Show. Welcome in, Dan K. Show fans. Let's get right to it. No time to waste. No time to halt. We had our power rankings episode last week, and that is thing number one. Teams are proving us wrong, and one of those organizations as a whole was the Metro Jets. The Metro Jets, the MJDP, the MHC, it was a big week in Metroland, and they absolutely made us look foolish. We tell them to prove it on the ice. They did. We'll talk about that. Thing number two, history made this past week, and we'll talk about that as well. Thing number three, the commish. Commissioner Bob Turo, Mr. Commissioner, sat down. I'll tell you what, you want to talk about the busiest schedule on the planet, <laughs> jumping into a one-of-a-kind hockey season, getting to know the biggest league in all the land, the best junior hockey playing experience in all the land, the best hockey playing experience in all the land for development cradle to college, and still had time to sit down with us. But before we talk about that, I'm going to introduce in my right-hand man, my consigliere, mon frere from another mayor, mon cousin from another aunt. We? Oui? No? Uh, je ne parle pas. I don't, what am I? Uh, je ne sais quoi. I don't know. I a certain I don't know what. Lucas Jones. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Uh, you were, I think, you would, you would get a grade on a test uh, with that one. I don't know what that grade yeah. necessarily would be. Um, but I think you, you'd at least get some sort of grade with what you've just managed to, to string together. I do my best. I try my best. But I'll tell you what, we brought our A game this week, Lucas, because it's time to talk with Commissioner Bob Turo. Let's get down to it. Let's throw to a quick chat we had before our audio podcast with Commissioner Bob Turo. What's going on, Dan K. Show fans? This is an interview we've been so excited to get since the news broke. Commissioner Bob Turo of the USPHL. Obviously, our favorite league. We've had a chance to cover it for the last six years now on our sixth season of the Dan K Show, traveling this great country, the biggest geographical footprint of any league here in the U.S., a league that has a cradle-to-college mantra that they live by, and a league that truly cares about each and every athlete that takes the ice from day one till the final day when you're moving up to that next level. They brought in the right guy here, folks. You look at a, a great background, an incredible resume, and a, a, a history of success in the game of hockey. Commissioner Bob Turo. First of all, Mr. Commissioner, we have to ask you, we have a bunch of fans, parents, players at home meeting you for the first time. Could you give a little introduction to yourself and, and let the folks know who's Bob Turo and kind of what brought you here to the USPHL? So uh, I am a father of four grandfather of two, uh, happily married. Uh, right now I have, uh, I live, I split my time between uh, uh, Clearwater, Florida and uh, Kitchener, Ontario, and of course all parts in between, and of course that'll increase. Um, my background uh, is in business, but the business of hockey. So I've uh, I spent nine years uh, scouting uh, in the Ontario Hockey League for the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. I, uh, because of that, I started a hockey tournament that was quite famous for a long time. That was called the Prospects Hockey Tournaments that graduated uh, about a thousand players to Division I NCAA hockey, a thousand players to the Ontario Hockey League, 500 of its participants played in the NHL, with uh, eight of them being uh, first overall uh, NHL draft choices. And then uh, in 2004, I, uh, I was uh, uh, approached by the United States Hockey League uh, to form their first ever central scouting agency. 
and showcase combines where uh, we formed a team of 10 people, um, scoured uh, the United States of America for the best players who were 14 to 16 years of age uh, so that we could showcase the USHL to them. So when it came time for them to make their decisions uh, on where they wanted to play junior hockey, it was going to be the USHL. Seems to have worked out pretty well for them. <laughs> now, we look at your background and you look at the success you've had, the names attached to some of the work you've done, whether it's Joe Thornton, Rick DiPietro, who's coming after our jobs now, Sidney mm -hmm. Crosby, Eric Johnson, Patrick Kane, Steven Stamkos, John Tavares, Taylor Hall, names that are just synonymous with success in the game of hockey, the development model, and, and just you look at this USPHL now, you know, you take on a new challenge here taking on the helm of the USPHL. Can you talk about kind of your, your goals here early on? Obviously, a lot going on, a one-of-a-kind season that you're stepping into here. What, what are your early goals here with the USPHL? Well, my, my first um, uh, order of business is to – right now I'm in the process of talking to literally every owner, uh, coach, general manager in the league uh, to hear what their ideas are and uh, just to get a footing with everybody in the league. But make no mistake about it, our goal long-term uh, is to increase, dramatically increase, the number of Division I NCAA commitments we have coming out of our league. And a lot of people think about our league as NCDC when I talk about that. I don't want to forget about our premier and elite. I mean, from premier and elite, they can graduate to the NCDC, and, uh, and then move on to division one. But we wanna make sure that our commitments uh, from premier and elite to division three or ACHA uh, dramatically increase as well. We wanna see people come through our league, get their education at the next level and set themselves up for the rest of their lives. That's incredible. This is a guy who gets it, ladies and gentlemen. You wanna hear more you're going to have to jump over to the Dan K Show Presents Junior Hockey, Spotify, iTunes, anywhere you get your podcast. We are going to have a lot more with Commissioner Bob Turo of the USPHL. For now, we have to jump over and talk about the Metro Jets Hockey Club and uh, just how, how personally they took their spot in our power rankings last week and what they did about it. History in the making with their female head coach and also a ton of of victories against top opponents that and more coming up next that was incredible we were so lucky to have the commissioner on with us now that was just a little bit of a taste of what you can get from our conversation with the new commissioner bob turo he answered those questions and many more on our audio podcast that nk show presents junior hockey which you can find on your favorite streaming platform, or if you don't have a Spotify, an iTunes, a Google podcast, you can go to anchor.fm backslash DKS hyphen hockey. That's our anchor landing page. You'll find all our podcasts as soon as they're posted. You can leave us an audio message and you can become a sponsor of the Dan K show all on that anchor page. That's awesome, man. What a, what a fun time we had. If you didn't listen yet, when this is over, go listen jump on over. It's worth listening. If you're a player, if you're a parent, if you're a prospective player or parent, you're a coach, you're an owner, you're a GM. Commissioner Bob Turo is here to care about the players, care about the experience. And this is a guy who has had immense success in the game of hockey, mm -hmm. immense success. This isn't, this isn't somebody getting his feet wet. This is somebody who has been in this thing since day one. He knows hockey. He knows success in business and in the sport. I'm excited to work with them. I, I am so pumped for the steps this league is taking, the growth that we are seeing each day, day in and day out. And, you know, Lucas, one of the things that's grown over the last few years has been our power rankings. Mm -hmm. Our USPHL Premier and Elite Dan K Show power rankings presented by Elite Junior Profiles. That's Elite Junior Profiles, EliteJRProfiles.com. Head on over there and set up your profile. But we – always make waves with our power rankings, especially in the premier 62 teams, right? Yep. We make these rankings and we put our names to them and we dig through it and we argue and we debate. 
And we always tell folks at the end of it, let us know your thoughts, but also for the players, let us know your thoughts by the way you play on the ice coming out of those rankings. Mm -hmm. And one organization as a whole took it personally and took that seriously and heard us loud and clear. The Metro Jets, the Metro Jets development program, the Metro Hockey Club, a huge weekend for all three programs, a huge historical victory for Coach Tina Sorallo, who we talked to last week. So when you're done with the Commissioner Bob Turo interview, listen to that as well. The first female head coach victory behind the bench for Tino Sorallo. And I'll tell you what, an important victory for MJDP, who sweep the Metro Jets Development Program, sweep the Pittsburgh Vengeance, the number six overall team in the nation, and now solidify themselves in my mind. I'm going to say it right now. The top team in the Midwest East, Q Chicago Cougars fans attacking Dan K. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it, it all comes down to the play on the ice, right? And why is it always that as soon as we put out our power rankings, there's always a big, important weekend? I feel like every yeah. single month, the USPHL knows we're putting power rankings out and <laughs> goes, yeah, let's put some of these teams together just to mess with the guys over at the Dan K show. But – it all comes down to the play on the ice. They heard loud and clear. This Pittsburgh Vengeance team is difficult. They are an offensive force, and I think what that's what failed them this past weekend. These are, these are going to be shootout games, and we've always said you can have good defense, you can have great goaltending, but you need to be able to survive a slugfest. You need to be able to survive these high goal games, and Pittsburgh Vengeance, unfortunately, was not able to do that this past weekend. And you're right, Dan, we always say that if you beat a team in the top 10, it almost guarantees, not quite guarantees, but almost guarantees. I don't use the word guarantee for anything. I don't use the word guarantee at all. I feel like that's a scary word, Lucas. I, that scares me because every time I guarantee something, it seems to change in this league. <laughs> and the way these teams play, there's just so much parity. You never know who's going to beat anybody. Mm -hmm. But MJDP sits there at 9 2 one and oh. They keep playing like this in November. You're going to see that first week of December, that name might pop up there in that top 10. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I think they're establishing themselves as a really good team. It's a, a powerhouse in that Midwest East division. And, you know, it, there's nothing quite as illustrative as watching teams from different divisions play each other. And especially this year, it's been difficult because there isn't a lot of interdivisional play. When we do get to see it, it really speaks waves about the teams that were involved in the game. It helps us make our decisions a lot easier. And I think one of the things we saw is that MJDP is a force to be reckoned with. Then you go to the Metro Hockey Club. I want to go there before we get to the Metro Jets. The MHC, they got four wins on the year. They gave Toledo a run for their money there, a 2 nothing mm -hmm. loss. If the offense could have gotten going, they might have knocked off our, our a top two squad in the USPHL Premier. What, I mean, what a weekend here. And the MHC, this is a program that – they're really starting to grow now. And you're seeing the coaches, this triumvirate of coaches with the Metro Jets program and organization starting to really get used to these players. And really you're seeing just how stellar they are at development. They are one of a kind out there in Michigan. Yeah, and you really got to give it up to the, the goaltending duo here, Salvatore Carabelli and Ethan Ryan. These two have been good all season long. They've kept their team in the game. Salvatore Carabelli, one of those goaltenders that kept his team in it against this high powered Toledo offense. You got to give the team a chance, right? And that's why you want to have that big offense. That's why you try to get your offense to show up. Unfortunately, they weren't able to, but it's, it's an impressive performance against a Toledo Cherokee team that has a plus 40 goal differential, almost twice as many goals for as goals against. I like what I saw. I mean, flat yeah. out. I think we both liked what we saw from those games this weekend, this MHC team, the newcomer this season, I think they have a lot to offer in this competitive Great Lakes division. And, you know, you start to think about the Great Lakes this year, potentially being the Midwest West of previous seasons where these teams are going to be close, they're going to be competitive, and they're going to give the two of us fits. Yeah, and before we go to the Metro Jets, I, I want to go back to the MJDP because we didn't get a chance to talk through the roster a little bit because I look at this – and I see some of the guys that really round this team out. You talk mm -hmm. about right defenseman Derek Trayer and, and, and left defenseman Alex Washburn. These are guys that really they settle things down for them. 
Brendan Ratchfall, Mitchell Fortin, who's, who's a, a fort to deal with, man. This guy is tough to deal with. And you look at the top of the score sheet for them. You got a 21-point getter in Joseph Mocknick. And then you got Hugo Fonovich there, nine goals, six assists. And Jake Aslanian, or Aslanian at eight goals, seven assists. This is a team that has a lot of talent. Patrick Hayes, the centerman, a face-off monster, five goals, seven assists. I love this MJDP team. Then you go to the Metro Jets. You go to the Metro Jets, and Lucas, they beat the Toledo Cherokee by one. So the total score differential right now in the Cherokee v. Jets matchup is zero. They are at even right now. They've each gotten a win. Metro takes a little bit of the advantage by winning in regulation now. Mm -hmm. So they've got the regulation points, I guess, if you had to tie break it. But you look at what Metro's done. They've been winning games with defense and goaltending, mm -hmm. right? They can score the goals, obviously, but defense and goaltending, it's been stellar. They gave up 25% of their goal, to goal, given, uh, goal allowed total, 25% of it, in that matchup with the Toledo Cherokee and still get a win. They're winning games every way they need to. Yeah, and, and this Mitchell Jets team has a lineage of great goaltenders, and it's William Augustine and Louis Pierre Fortier. We've talked about them over and over, and it's because they, they deserve it. You know, the, if a team goals against average of 1.51, a team save percentage of 0 0.930, it's right-hand, left-hand with these two. They can start against anyone. It's just that this Metro Jets offense has to click when the goaltending also clicks. And these games against Toledo have been incredibly close. This is a matchup that – if it's on the calendar, mark your calendars, grab the popcorn, and sit yourself down and watch some of the best hockey right now, the best matchup hockey that the USPHL has to offer. This is one of those matchups that depending on how the division shakes out with the seeding, you know, playing regionals before getting into the nationals tournament, might get interesting, and you might see some teams jockeying for position. The question is, Dan, with how close Metro and Toledo, and this is going to be in the category of way too early conversations. Got it. With, the Good way with, the, with the way the matchups have gone so far, do Metro and Toledo want to play each other in that first round of regionals, or are you trying to stay as far away as possible? No way. No way do you want to see each other. You, <laughs> you want to get as far away. You want to socially distance your play. <laughs> you don't want to see each other. You want to wave to each other in the airport on the way to nationals. That's what you want to do. You want nothing to do with seeing them at all. They, they, these two teams want to be one and two. They want to be one and two going into the postseason and figure it out from there. There's a ton of talent in that Great Lakes. But right now you've seen it's not just about the – it's about your matchup, right? And they just – the matchup right now is even. So neither of these teams want to see each other. That is for sure. Two other teams – is we go into the NCDC now that don't want to see each other, man, but they're going to see a bunch of each other. It's the battle for the Garden State. We had this game live on hockey TV. It was the free game of the week this past week. Rockets Hockey Club, Jersey Hitmen, and these might be the two most talented rosters in the country right now. This was one of the best hockey games I've seen in a long, long time. And you look at the talent playing in this game, Let's, let's do this, all right, Lucas? The top six point getters in the NCDC right now mm -hmm. were all playing <laughs> in that game. Number one, Clark Kerner. Number two, Johnny Wesco. Number three, Connor Tate the Condor. Number four, Liam McClinsky. Number five, Shane Shell. Number six, Finnegan Sayers. You want to talk talent. How about the six top point getters in the country on the ice at the same time? Incredible. And it was, it was so much fun to watch. And, Dan, with the top six point scorers, what did we get? We got a defensive battle. We yeah, got, exactly. We did. We got, we got a goaltender battle. It was so much fun to watch. I wouldn't have had it any other way than to be there in person. It was truly, truly an incredible game. We had physicality. We had players going into the corner boards, a lot of play behind the net. That's where both of these offenses like to generate a lot of their strength to get in behind the net, get the puck down low. And what did we see a little bit with the hitmen? When the Rockets were allowed to get behind the net, the hitmen were able to sort of diffuse the situation. And that was almost the difference maker. The Rockets sometimes got a little bit too trapped in that, that overwhelming crash the net offense. And the hitmen were able to sort of get the puck out running on the advantage. And again, it comes down to overtime. And you almost wouldn't have it any other way. 
and you look at net mining throughout the entire NCDC this year, seven net miners, Damon Beaver, the Hitman, Aiden Harper, the Rockets Hockey Club, Connor mm-hmm. Bradford of the Boston Advantage, Chase Clark of the Jersey Hitmen, Matthew O'Donnell of the Rockets Hockey Club, Alex Conti of the Northern Cyclones, and Charlie Archer of the Junior Bruins. All seven sub two goals against averages and two or more starts. It is yeah. the year of the netminder. All of them, nine four saves percentage and up. It's been insane to watch the goaltending prowess in this league. Let's break down the net mining though, because we thought we see you see, you know, how many times do you watch another sport and you have the the two quarterbacks match up and it's Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, or the two ace pitchers line up on the mound and it's it's the Roger Clemens Pedros from back of the day and it turns into the opposite of what you think, right? Mm-hmm. We got goaltending from two of the best goaltenders in the country. And it wasn't even a Hitman's number one guy in terms of starts right now in Damon Beaver, who was 6-0 with an 0.67 goals against average and four shutouts with a 9.74 stage percentage. Damon Beaver has built a dam in front of the net, and he, he will be damned if you score on him. It's not going to happen. Then you look at his, his, his backup. I mean, I use that word so loosely. Chase <laughs> Clark, who's 2-0, with a 1.46, a 9.61 save percentage, and outdueled Aiden Harper, who's been unstoppable all year long. Yeah, I mean, I, I had a great time watching Chase Clark go to work because this is a goaltender who is a positional goaltender. He loves to get a clean look at a shooter because he's got the angle game down pat, and he's a bigger body, a little bit of a bigger frame, so he takes up a little more of that net. I think, Dan, you had made the walrus joke on the air of, how are you supposed to get by him? He's a walrus. <laughs> it's and- a walrus. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and it's exactly what it is. And and he he went to work. He was only beat when there was chaos in front of the net. With a goaltender mm-hmm. like that, it's all about second chances. That was the only couple of times they were able to beat Clark was because of a second chance opportunity and getting him to move a little bit. And then we, we went over to Aiden Harper and we talked about him a little bit on the broadcast as well. This is a guy whose lower half is so strong. He, can, he doesn't just slide from post to post. He moves himself with authority, with strength. He knocked over a couple of guys. He cleared out some space on his own. And of course, not afraid to get out there and, and really give his coach a heart attack when he skates out from the net because he loves to get out there and play it. It compliments the Rockets. But man, I don't want to be the coach on the bench when that happens. Yeah, I mean, but that's the thing, right? The six skater. You, when mm-hmm. you play defense in the game of hockey, unless that netminder's pulled on the other side, which then you're in better shape, means you're winning. Unless that netminder's pulled, you're playing six on five hockey if you've got a goaltender who can skate. And it just helps so much with clearing that puck, beating the four check game, really keeping the puck out of your end and not allowing a team to set up shop and, and start chopping the wood. And it's it. you look at the Rockets Hockey Club, they've got a, a backup again who I use the word loosely, and Matthew O'Donnell is 2-0 and with a 9.59 saves percentage and a 1.5 goals against. When you have two netminders at this level, it is so important. When you play showcases, when you play three days in a row, four or five days in a week, when you're playing a lot of hockey, to have a netminder you can trust every single day is so important. You cannot, you cannot shy away from how important that is. Both of these teams are getting net mining. Both of these teams can score in bunches. And then I want to talk about the Jersey Hitmen's Jin Lee, the centerman of that second line there. Mm-hmm. I mean, talk about a guy who was already a Division One talent who's taken himself from fourth line guy to second, third line guy. This guy has – this is – the hands right now. I have, I have not seen a jump in talent that large in a long time that was a huge offseason for Jin Lee and some incredible work he must have been putting in on and off the ice yeah and I think one of the best things about covering the league in the way that you and I do Dan is seeing the growth of these players year in and year out we saw it last year with defenseman Bryce DeFazio and how every year he added a new skill to the bag of tricks culminating in a, in a hat trick game with some rockets from the blue line it's the same thing with Jin Lee we saw him last year Hardworking player, good skater, able to play long shifts. The endurance was there. The hockey IQ is there, his ability to see the ice. And then this year, what does he go out and add? The smoothest hands in the league. We saw him deke around defenders, put the puck out there on a string, and find himself openings. That's the type of player you want. There's a a good amount of these guys in the NCDC this year that 
not only can find their own way to the net, but they can create space. And that space allows other people to get open. Jin Lee's great at passing the puck. And what we saw between the Rockets Hockey Club and the Jersey Hitmen, their success so far this year has been giving those skilled guys a little bit of free reign. But then those guys recognize if I'm drawing two, three, if I'm crashing the defense, I got teammates with open shots and making sure those guys get some of the love too. And we look at this Jersey Hitman roster. You talked a lot of Rockets Hockey Club, a lot about this team. We've had a couple games of theirs, a couple broadcasts. One of the things that Toby Harris and Jim Hunt do so well is putting guys together that complement each other's game in the correct way. Mm -hmm. It's why it's such a grinding style to play against. It's why as you watch games wear on, it looks like the other team's playing 120 minutes and the Hitmen are playing 60. That's what it looks like by the end of every single Hitman game for the last – ever since I've been watching the Hitman play. And you look at the top line this year of Aquero, Ibrahim, McClinsky. It doesn't get much better than that balanced attack. Aquero might be one of the fastest men alive. McClinsky might be the most talented hands in all of junior hockey right now. He's the new Mickey Burns. And then Daniel Ibrahim is a grinder, man, who's just smart with the puck can make the big play. He's tough. He got flipped end over end, got back up and almost scored a puck two seconds later, went, finished the shift with a good check into the boards and hopped over. This is a tough dude who battles day in and day out. And that triumvirate at the top sets the tone the rest of the way. And then you talk about, you know, Stephen Townley, a Division I recruit, a Division I commit, going to Dartmouth, Ivy Leaguer, sent him into that fourth forward line. They don't have one, two, three. They, have, they, don't, they don't have one, two, three, four. They have one A, one B, one C, one D. Yeah, and and we were so impressed from what we saw with Luca Quero. I mean, he he slides into that top line with two guys that we 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 know and we've seen quite a bit. Aquero showcased his skills. One of the other people that I think made a huge impression on me with that game this weekend is right defenseman Jarrett Overland. And Overland is a typical defenseman in the sense that you know the points don't show up for defensemen, and then that's going to be true for almost everybody, unless you're an offensive defenseman. But what really impressed me about Overland was his ability to be in the right place at the right time, his smart physicality, right? It's not just laying out the big hit. It's creating the space that opens something else up. It's being in the right position to be able to defend the shot. It's getting in front of those shots and sacrificing the body. But every time I looked at Overland, every time he hopped on the ice, he was always getting involved in a positive way. I think this is a player that has a really big future in the game right now, he's an 01 Air Force Academy. Uh, this is a guy who I think does all the right things in all the right ways. Yeah, and, and I love watching these two teams play. This NCDC division and this league, the talent this year is next level. Mm -hmm. We can't wait to keep covering it around the country. We can't wait to keep talking NCDC, but we had to stop talking for now because it's time for us to talk to you. We skipped it last week because we had a nine hour long episode going through those power rankings, but we're going to talk to you this week. Let's head to our favorite segment where we chat with you, the empty net. Welcome to the empty net. Welcome to our favorite portion of each week's show, the empty net, where we talk to you, the fans and you know, this time I got to be a fan because I got reached out to by the Charlotte Rush, Lucas, who uh, they said, looks like we're on to something here after a big weekend for the Rush. After Dan K gave him the Dan K bump, he gave him the rousing call. He rallied the troops. He got the boys together and they went out and started winning hockey games big time. The Charlotte Rush are back and on the attack. And I love when they reach out. Yeah, they're, they're always a fun bunch year in and year out. And we love it when they do. We love when teams reach out to us, whether it's a little bit of smack talk for you because we didn't put them in the, the right spot in the power rankings or whether it's sending us goals. We love that too. And, you know, it's, uh, it's fun. I mean, we've always said that that's why we do it, right? We do it for the players, for the parents, for the teams. And when they get involved, it just makes it that much more fun. Yeah, and the Metro Jets were chirping us this weekend in a fun way, man. They, they were so excited about their win. Patrick Hayes reached out to us to let us know about the historic – First win ever behind the bench for a female coach in the USPHL. That was awesome news. And congrats to Tina Sorallo, who is awesome. She is just awesome. She gets it. 
big time developer of talent there knows that she puts the players first too. And that's why these players love, love to play for her rally around her and MJDP were excited to get her, her first win over the Pittsburgh vengeance, a top 10 team in the country. That's just not a win. You didn't just kind of you know, walk it. It's a win, man. That's a huge win. Yeah, that, that's huge. And congratulations to Coach Sorallo. You know, the first time we met her at the Detroit Combine out there, we were just impressed with her her professionalism, you know, her knowledge and, and the passion that she does have for the game and, and for these players. She leaves it out all out there on the ice every single week. And congratulations once again. Yeah, and the Blue Ox beat the Moose. They let us know that. The Blue <laughs> Ox were behind the Moose in the Midwest uh... West, in the power rankings, and again – the curse of the Midwest West rears its ugly head every time we put a team in the Midwest West at the top. They get beat by another Midwest West foe who thinks they should be ahead of them. Uh, it's the millionth time. I apologize to the Moose. Um, it was antlers down this weekend against the Blue Ox. And to the Blue Ox, you proved this wrong yet again. Here we go. The Blue Ox. Eventually, we're just going to have to put the Blue Ox number one because every, we keep putting them not number one. But I don't want to put them number one because then we're going to jinx them. That it's, it's a tough situation. These guys need to figure it out. I, I have nearly had enough with this division. You guys I, figure it out. it out. Talk amongst yourselves. Figure out who you want to be on next month's top ten and you let us know. I, I love watching that hockey up there. Lucas, you had someone reach out on Instagram and, and talk a little bit about the, uh, the hosts of the Dan K Show and their broadcasting prowess. That is true. We did get reached out to by uh, Guy Trico, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, reached out to us and said, Dan, awesome play calling for the Connecticut Junior Rangers versus Junior Islanders NCDC game. You are honestly the best hockey announcer I have ever heard. You and Lucas are a great combo. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Guy. We read it out on the broadcast. An interesting moment on the broadcast where Dan only read the first part of that comment and <sighs> immediately blacked out and forgot to read the second part. I, I joke, of course. We love the feedback. We're so happy that you enjoyed our broadcast. We love that game. We love bringing you the top quality stuff. And we had so much fun with the Hitmen, too, this weekend. We got a lot of great messages and a lot of support about that Hitmen Rockets game. You know, Parents and fans can't always go to these rinks and watch. Some state spectators aren't allowed. Some state spectators are limited. So the broadcasts become even more important. That's why we've adapted with the times to bring you socially distanced coach and star of the game interviews because you guys still want those interviews. So we're going to give them to you in a safe way in accordance with all local ordinances because it's all about the game on the ice. And we yep. get to present that to you every week. And, and Lucas, uh, I, I know you won't pat your own back on this, but the, the work folks that Lucas is putting in here on a technical side of things to make that a possibility, do not forget that I have no clue how to get it done. <laughs> so do not forget how important his role in that is and putting that together, making it possible to have these socially distanced interviews, keeping the players healthy, happy, safe, and playing this game of hockey while covering them and getting them seen by maybe scouts, coaches, and, and parent, their own parents and family where they wouldn't be able to be seen because of everything going on and, and safety measures. So, we're, uh, Lucas, I'm thankful for you. I know the folks at home are, but you know, I know you won't toot your own horn, but I will do it for you there. With that, though, I mean, when I did read the part of the, the, the comment that was about me, I was taught to quit while I'm ahead. I quit <laughs> while I was ahead there, all right? It's why I leave the golf course if I birdie the first hole immediately and don't play anything else. Yeah, I mean, that's a good strategy because if, you know, if, if, if you don't mess up, nothing went wrong and then basically everything went right. That's, that's the uh, property of subtraction, I think. I, th I think. I don't even know what that means. But you know what? You know what I do know? I know when to stop a show. I know when we've reached the finish line. So I'm going to look to you, Lucas, on the screen, whatever side. I always forget what side you're on. I do watch the show, though. I will look to you for your parting words for this week's broadcast. I will finish with my parting words, which is who is the best game show host of all time? Alex Trebek. I know Lucas, uh, you and I are huge Jeopardy people. We love Jeopardy. I grew up watching it. 
the uh, Alex Trebek made it fun to be a nerd, fun to be smart, fun to learn, right? And fun to educate yourself. He was an incredible professional, started at CBC in Canada. One of those guys who towed the line between Canada and the U.S. and was a star in both. And a guy who you invited into your home every single night to teach you things you had no clue you needed to know. I'll tell you, it, it, he was a hero of mine, and he's, he's a hero of a lot of people, and he's a huge hockey fan, huge supporter of the game, a huge advocate for the game of hockey. I know there's a lot of folks in hockey who will miss Alex Trebek. We thank you for watching. We remind you, stay safe, stay distanced. Keep playing hard every single day and get ready for some more hockey because we got a lot of hockey left to come. When Dan Case on the mic, it's always hockey night. Thank you for watching, hockey fans.